The call to the Honourable Member for Barara. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Prime Minister. In June 2022, the National Aboriginal Community Controlled Health Organisation wrote to the government pleading for the Commonwealth to extend the NT alcohol ban for an additional two years to maintain their dry status and prevent a spike in alcohol-related injury and offending. Why did the Prime Minister ignore these calls from Indigenous leaders? The call to the Prime Minister. Thanks very much. Uh, and I thank, uh, I thank the member for his question. Uh, which goes to a, a very serious issue, of course. And today, uh, the cabinet has met, and the Northern Territory cabinet met as well, uh, chaired by Natasha Files, and she has already uh, made uh, a, a joint announcement on our behalf after we received the report from Darrell Anderson. And it's true that there were changes as a result of the decision of the former government. Uh, to stop the Stronger Futures program in June of last year, after it was put in place by uh, the former Labor government in 2012, over a 10-year period, under then Minister Macklin. Uh, the Northern Territory government will legislate new alcohol restrictions when they meet next week, so that Northern Territory town camps and communities return to an opt-out system. The dry zones will remain in place until an approved community alcohol management plan uh, is developed and agreed to uh, by the, uh, the liquor uh, controlled controller in the Northern Territory, and then it will need to be put to a local community with a 60 per cent threshold. But as the member is aware, I'm sure, this isn't just about alcohol. Indeed, of the 96 remote communities in the Northern Territory, 88 of them are dry. Uh, this is about intergenerational disadvantage. It's about a lack of employment services, a lack of community services, a lack of educational opportunity. This is intergenerational disadvantage. And the truth is that all governments could have done better. All governments, Labor, Liberal, Northern Territory, here in Canberra, could have done better. And that's why uh, we have also uh, announced uh, a Central Australia plan for a better, safer future for Central Australia with $250 million of investment on top of what we announced just a week ago. That will include improved community safety and cohesion through more youth engagement and diversion programs, along with improved CCTV and lighting. It will improve job creation. It will include on-country learning. Importantly, preventing and addressing issues caused by fetal alcohol spectrum disorders, better services, investing in families, investing in increased domestic violence services. These policies will be developed and implemented uh, in, in partnership with the Northern Territory Government, with the Northern Territory Controller, Darrell Anderson, who's been put in place. They're driven by one goal, real lasting improvements in people's lives. But what we know is that it won't be solved overnight, but we do know that you get better outcomes if you involve communities on the ground, yeah. on the ground, rather than uh, think that think that decisions should be best made uh, in Canberra, and that is why we've structured this. I'm very pleased that the cabinet uh, approved this this uh, on the basis of after receiving the report uh, from uh, Darrell Anderson. Uh, that report will now be released. Uh, publicly for all to see. Now it's been considered by both the Northern Territory Cabinet and the, the Australian Cabinet. And I'd invite uh, the opposition to participate constructively in this. There's nothing to be served by trying to politicise these issues. What we need to do is work together, together, all of us, to achieve better outcomes for the most disadvantaged group in Australian society First Nations people, that's what my government's committed to doing. Yeah. Yeah.